Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Dell Technologies World. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. And you're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, break it all down, Stu. This is our ninth year at uh, Dell, or well, EMC, Dell EMC, Dell <laughs> Technologies World. Yeah, I mean, Dave, and old EMC World was one of the first places I met you. I think it was like 2008 or something like that. There was like a little blogger lounge. Uh, yeah, this is 15 for you. I think yeah. it's uh, 11 or 12 for me. Yeah. So it's been, been quite a run. I mean, you remember the early days of this event that was really a technical show. Um, and I think that's probably why it's had such staying power because you know, the, the, the roots are you know, embedded in technology, but wow, what a, what a long way we've come. Yeah, I, I mean, right, first of all, Dave, the Cube, oh my God, I can't believe, double set here. We were looking at photos of us like shoved in the corner with horrible lighting and no good cameras, and you know, we, we got a massive crew here. Uh, you're always looking sharp as usual, uh, Dave. Thank you, Stu. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I mean, gosh, that, that first year, I, you know, I, I was wearing like, you know, a vendor polo. Hoodies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no hoodies back then. I, I, I wear a hoodie some now, um, but it, it's interesting interesting for me, especially since I spent 10 years working at EMC, I've been at Dell World for four or five years, kind of the, the mashup of those two is you know, the biggest tech merger we've been covering since it was announced. Uh, this show has a lot of Dell overtones, so you and I have been that, that Dell World was originally like that CIO event, you had people like you know, Bill Clinton and Elon Musk up on stage here. Uh, at this show, we got people like Walter Isaacson up on stage. I love reading his books, listen to the podcast. Uh, Andy McAfee, Andy McAfee yeah. who you and I have interviewed a few times, mm -hmm. uh, talking about the second machine age. So some of those kind of high level business issues as opposed to the you know, deep in the portfolio, Dave Donatelli upstage, well, you know, walking through you know, 37 different product announcements. So back then, did you, did you have hair or was this uh, <laughs> it, Yeah, come on Dave, I was, uh, when I started at EMC, I was seven foot tall and had hair. And, <laughs> You know, the years of tech beat me down. But so let's, let's look at this merger, Stu. We go back, we, I've, we've said, you and I have talked about this a lot. It was inevitable. You had Amazon coming in hard, uh, driving margins of the enterprise down. Something had to happen to HPE. Something had to happen to, e, to EMC, these infrastructure companies. And, and we said at the time that what was, we're going to see is 19% gross margin company married to the 60% gross margins company come somewhere together in the low 30s gross margin. That's exactly what we've seen. Um, the thing that's a little bit surprising to me is we've seen growth out of Dell. You're not seeing a lot of growth out of many en enterprise infrastructure companies that are, that are large and incumbents. Obviously guys like Pure Storage grow very quickly, but at the time the merger, we pinned them at what, low 70s, and they're now $80 billion. Yeah. And we want to break that down a little bit, but um, did the growth surprise you? The, uh, it's particularly the, the client side well, grew, well that's and, and the storage side declined yeah. well, precipitously. D Dave, as you've been breaking down and you know, been watching you, half of their business is the client side, and when they call out 21 consecutive quarters of growth, well, if half the business is growing, that's good. Uh, and VMware, doing well. We just interviewed Pat Gelsinger. You know, VMware's clicking well, uh, integrating with the cloud. Uh, th th there's a lot of change there. Uh, you know, just one, one, one quick thing, talk about EMC. For, for me, one of the saving graces for EMC is they never bought a large services organization. Uh, you know, back in the day, it was like, oh, they were going to buy Accenture. Yeah. There were some of these things. You look at the companies that have, you know, 100,000 services people, they're having to trim down, they're having to spin things out. The, you know, the Dell spin merges, Dell did spin off Perot. Uh, so while there has been some consolidation and some reductions uh, since Dell and EMC have come together, uh, you know, overall, you know, they're growing, there's good, there's, there's new areas that they're, uh, you know, putting, putting R&D together. So just to give our audience a little, you know, sort of overview in case you're not that familiar with what Dell has become, Dell Technologies. I mean, essentially you're looking at a, a, an $80 billion business. The, the core client side and infrastructure of the enterprise side uh, comprise about 69 billion. VMware is almost 8 billion. And then other, you know, RSA and, and well, whatever's back then pivotal before the IPO, uh, et cetera, you know, Dell Financial, et cetera, is about 3 billion. That, that gets you to 80 billion. As you said, the client side is about half of the business. It's growing very nicely at around 7% a year, and it's a, a, about 5.5, 5.6% operating income. The ISG business, which is the, 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 
the core of, of e, the classic EMC, all the server stuff, all the networking stuff. Um, it's about, uh, let's see, 30.7 billion, almost 31 billion. The servers and networking side are growing at 20% a year. The storage is declining, you know, quite significantly. Double digits, they're sort of moderating that, that decline. Um, and it's a, a higher percentage of operating income uh, as a percentage of revenue, about 7%. You'd like to see that significantly higher. Now you go to VMware, right? VMware is 10% uh, 10, uh, 10 of the company's revenue, but it accounts for half of the company's operating cash flow because its margins are, you know, operating margins, you know, way up. You know, high 20s, low 30s. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Dave, it was, you know, I, I remember at VMworld, uh, I think it was two years ago, I went to Michael, I'm like, Michael, people think you're going to sell that off, and he was just foaming at the mouth. He's right. like, they're stupid, they don't understand well, math. Well, why would he? You know, it's VMware, a 35% operating margin well, business. I mean, I, it's I mean, a fantastic Dave, business. to be honest, everybody watching is, VMware went through a little bit of a downturn. Uh, you know, the, the show two years ago, uh, what, what wasn't right. great, but, uh, you know, NSX is now cooking. Uh, you know, vSAN's doing great. There's, there's lots of good areas that they have there. And the, the, the cloud picture, I mean, turn back three years ago, Dave, you know, VMware was making statements like, you know, when you know the old bookseller wins, you know, we're we're losing. Uh, EMC uh, on their side was kind of trying to play a little bit with the public cloud, but it was well understood in the field, public cloud is your enemy, and the market has matured. It's understood that companies are figuring out their cloud strategy and their application and data strategy, and it's not a winner take all, zero sum game. Everything goes to you know one of the top three or four public cloud players. So I got to ask you, so you feel as though that's sustainable, right? Because I got to say, if I were AWS, I would be looking at this saying, this is awesome. I need to get into the enterprise. I got to deal with the number one enterprise infrastructure player in VMware in terms of its brand and its, and its presence. I mean, a half a million customers, I think, is, yep. the, is the number. I'm very excited. Um, the flip side of that is the reality is, is that deal, for VMware has been a huge tailwind for them. So help us square that circle. Yeah, and, and Dave, it's nuanced and complicated because when I talk to service providers, when I talk to the channel partners here with VMware and with Dell, they're all starting to work more and more with VMware. So, you know, short term, next two to three years, I think there, there, there's a great tailwind for VMware to get involved here, but my concern is long term that people get on Amazon and they say, this is great, and look at all these services and all of these things. Uh, Eh, maybe I don't need to pay for my server virtualization anymore. Maybe I don't need some of those pieces. What do I need in my data center? Sure, I'll continue, but it, it, it's slowly declining. Like you mentioned, storage is on a bit of, of a decline overall. So, you know, it's, it's death by a thousand cuts. It is that replacement. Um, for me, it's always watching, you know, that data and that applications. It is tough, like super tough. David Floyer always say, you know, migrations, don't do them. <laughs> You're going to go through so much pain, especially things like database migrations. But it is something that's happening. It's going to take the next five to 10 years as we look at these shifts. Uh, people are building new apps all the time. That tends to favor, uh, you know, the, the, the public clouds. And there, there's so much happening in that space. But you know, the whole Dell family, including Pivotal and VMware, VirtuStream, RSA, uh, there are places where they win and still do well because remember, of course, none of these companies, it's not like they have 75% market share. So, you know, if, if you ask Michael Dell, number one thing is he wants to take market share from, you know, HPE. And if he continues to take some of their market share, it can help offset some of the things that he's losing to the public cloud. Well, and you have to take market share, you know, in a, in a market that's not growing that, that fast, but you know, as we say in the cube many times, these disruptions are not binary, right? We still have mainframes, for example. In fact, they're helping their tailwind for IBM right now. So, so you can put forth a scenario where, yeah, a lot of these cloud native apps are going to be built, you know, in AWS, and a lot of VMware customers are going to do that. But as we often say, organizations can't just take their data and stuff it into the cloud, the public cloud, right? They've got to bring the cloud operating model to their data, to their business. We, we asked Pat, is it, is it just use case specific, the, the, the Amazon cloud and IBM, I guess, as well, or is it really bringing that cloud experience? And he you know, definitively said it's, it's both, and I, I presume you buy that. Yeah, and I mean, Dave, I, I listened to Michael Dell's keynote, and he said, you know, their goal is to integrate from the edge to the multi-cloud world. 
There's things that I want to understand this week. Uh, you know, I talked to some of my, you know, the real propeller heads here that do really adv advanced type, type of uh, technology. There's sessions here on containers. Uh, you know, there's uh, probably people talking about serverless here at the show. Uh, so they're, they're looking at those next generation things, especially the VMware side of the house uh, is there at the edge. Uh, you and I uh, got to hear really the IoT strategy uh, that Dell laid out uh, towards the end of last year. Uh, edge, absolutely huge you know, opportunity and there is no clear leader today because it, it's very early here. So how real are some of these opportunities to uh, really you know, expand beyond the traditional market? Uh, because look, Dell's doing great in servers, that's the core of their business, it's the, it's the you know, main driver for a lot of it, and you know, as, as Michael's happy to say, he said, you know, hey, the PCs and you know, laptops are still doing well you know, two decades after IBM called it the post-PC world. Thank goodness for, for, for client side, yeah. I mean, that has been you know, the savior here. What, what do you think, I mean, you were at EMC for a number of years, what do you think happened to the storage side? That was a surprise to me, because EMC is very rarely, if ever, lost share in storage. They've already held share, bumped it up, do it acquisitions and so forth. But you, you had kind of Tucci with his hand at the wheel doing tuck-in acquisitions, really focused on maintaining that share. Do you think it was just the disruption of the, the merger? Was it just inevitable that you had, you know, just the, the storage business getting too long in the tooth? What, what happened? Yeah, I, I mean, Dave, and there's so many things. Everything from the quarter shifted. So, you know, it was going to take the end of quarter, which, you know, EMC always had a huge hockey stick on, shifted by a month. So some of it, it was just financial, where it landed up in, in the quarter. Uh, some of it, some of the big shifts that are happening in the market. EMC was very early on Flash and did well in it, and they've got the VMAX, and they've got the Extreme IO, and they're doing well there, but there's lots of competition there. Uh, Hyperconverge, once again, Dell and EMC doing great there, but there are some of these macro shifts and clouds eating away at it. So I, I don't have a single answer. It's, it's, there's so many different pieces. You know, storage has always been a knife fight. One of the things I want to understand this week, Dave, is the old EMC. Well, we're going to have you know nine or 17 different products and they'll all overlap. Um, you wonder if Dell is going, you know, I, I really expect that Michael, Dell, Jeff Clark are going to streamline that portfolio profitability, uh, make sure that they're getting the market share that they need because uh, the old model might have worked in a growing market, but in a you know, flat to slightly negative market, it, it, it's not going to make well, it, sense. Well, and you already said that. I mean, you made the point, Michael, Michael's keynote, the keynotes this, generally this morning, no question had Michael's uh, you know, fingerprint on them. Um, much, much more like a Dell world than a traditional EMC world. We had you know, Jeremy and, and Jonathan coming out of motorcycles, all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, much more stayed. Um, I think conservative, uh, sending a message of, of steady, we're here for you to support the, you know, your digital transformation, we are your infrastructure partner, so I, mean, I think it's clear who's running the company. All right, Stu, um, well, looking forward to this week, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, double cube sets, you know, check out thecube.net for all the live coverage, uh, check out siliconangle.com, wikibon.com as well for all the research. We'll be back right after this short break, we're live. Dell Technologies World 2018.